I, I recently just threw a gigantic grenade in Fedora Devel list, which is our, uh -huh. our main mailing list where people interact. So um, I'm a huge fan of the discourse uh, forum system. Mm -hmm. I know not everybody is. And I didn't grow up a forum system. I like uh, for a forum person. Like mm -hmm. I hate PHP BB style things. Oh, it's awful and terrible design. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, honestly, um, Usenet, like they think that got a lot of Oh, uh, sorry, um, you cut out really badly right there. Oh, sorry. Usenet is that censored somehow automatically? <laughs> I don't uh, know. I don't... <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, weird Australian internet things. So don't worry about it. You were saying Usenet, yeah. and then it cut out. Yeah, Usenet. Um, that they got a lot of things right with the design of that as a conversation platform, mm -hmm. except for it has no authentication and you know spammers and other things right, basically right. destroyed its usefulness. Oh well, um, but forums have not been really very good. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I've got a soft spot for mailing lists. I've been communicating in mailing lists for a long time, but mm -hmm. they also have some big disadvantages um and one of them is that they are really hard for new people um, right and and just um the like sign up barrier is difficult and just mailing list culture and how to interact and now i've got to sign up and now i'm on a list forever oh no i like, think that barrier is uh, also bigger today as well because a lot of like young developers if you're getting involved in a lot of newer projects they're doing communication on like, you know, a Discord or a Matrix or something like that, where it's yeah. a very different style of like getting involved. Like, you, you just join a thing. You probably have an account in some other server already. It's, you just join it. It's good to go. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, there are a lot of people, who, I mean, there are a lot of things that people like about the mailing list. Mm -hmm. And one of them is that uh, you know people have a workflow set up yeah. and it all comes to you and you can skim it and so on. So that's been pretty important mm -hmm. and people people don't want to lose that. Right, right. Um but um I yeah uh, I feel like the downsides are, are pretty high of having that as well, our they also main, are main fairly platform. easy to archive as well. That's another really big yeah, advantage. Oh yeah arch right that's another thing. And having my own local archive, having an offline access, yeah that is that is an important or just a public uh, archive. Thing. Just uh, anyone who's not involved sure. in the mailing list can just you know, easily scroll through it and you see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. It's something other than like the main the main site or whatever. The yeah, site is yeah. down or whatever. Yeah, that's definitely definitely true. Um But uh I so the grenade that I threw into the develop list was that I really think we should close down that list and move everything over to the discourse forum, oh. which is a very big change in how things work and i want to make sure that we make it so we bring people along as mm -hmm. well i don't want to you know lose people um just just for that and i, and I would hate to it is it is yeah. a change in workflow and you know mm -hmm. changes change it like it actually you know causes pain in in your brain to yeah. have things moved from where they were and I, it's a it's I, i'm not kidding it's real mm -hmm. um and it's hard and you know it, that's, it's gonna it's gonna be hard for some people but we're we're going to try it out um at first with like our changes process and then maybe you know with other things as we go and i think that will really help make it a lot more accessible make the make the activity more visible and give us some better tools for you know, uh, better conversations where mm -hmm. uh, often mailing list threads uh, be, you you can moderate mailing lists only with a very big hammer. Um, of, right. I I will ban this person, and it's often after the fact. And once a message has gone out, it's there. So forum gives us a little more ability to uh, not just you know block things, but to uh, encourage people to you know rephrase mm -hmm. or to split topics into different things if something goes off topic it's okay yeah. the off topic thing might actually be important but let's have this topic over here right, so all right. those kind of thing modern tools are nice so um i really would like us to move more to that and that's a challenge it's one of the mm -hmm. how do you get there from here things um i think you know on my side in that is the general collapse just like like usenet failed before of, of email as a usable platform mm -hmm. which i know people are disappointed by because it's you know it's decentralized and so on and all of these things at least theoretically mm -hmm. but really there's a handful a half dozen of big mail providers yeah. and uh at, for a while you know fighting spam was a big deal mm -hmm. but actually at the scale they are at spam is not a problem it's mm -hmm. annoyance but they don't like 
uh, they, they, they have the visibility into everything and exchanges with each other uh, to control it for their systems. But I don't know how many of you all are nerdy enough to run your own mail server like I still do. Um, it's insane the amount of spam that comes mm -hmm. in. And you know I can run spam assassin and whatever, but it only it, I don't have the scope to pick that up. Right. And therefore, other mail, the big mail providers have less and less incentive to even care about mm -hmm. mail from smaller providers and i know um and, and it's it's uh it's not going to be long before basically mail has to go through a mm -hmm. major provider or else it will not be delivered um i know that's like sounds like doom and gloom but that's that's the way that's the way email's going and that also matches like people's use of email changes i can't mm -hmm. remember the last time i've exchanged an email with a friend that's like you know we used to do that it was it was back like back then yeah. we used to remember when people sent letters now we have email <laughs> ha 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 now email was like like sending uh, uh you know i i writing out a letter long head and putting it in the in the mail mm -hmm. and sending somebody an email uh, a, a personal email seem about the same kind of antique to me now. Honestly, for me, um, the, most of my emails I send are for the like the people who prefer to use email to talk about doing the podcast. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Most right, yeah, right, yeah. There's coordination stuff like that can yeah. happen, and then it, then it's like business exchange yeah, stuff, exactly. or like my you know my 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 receipts go to my email and mm -hmm. my like you know right, login right. information and you know and all the, the thousand of websites I, you've given your email the, to that keeps yeah the things they back. say that I've opt <laughs> I get things because I opted in and I did not opt in. Oh, I'm nope. tired of arguing. Right, yeah, right. So um uh, so emails falling apart. And I, this wasn't supposed to be a podcast where I rant about email. That's fine. But, like uh, we need, like it's we need we need to move to other things. Mm -hmm. But I would actually like to make sure we can have some of those strengths. Um, and discourse um, is an open source platform. It's got a it, it the API is not a beautiful API and it's under documented, but it does have one. Uh, and so I'd actually like it, there is actually an activity pub plugin. Um, it's not. It's not good yet, but um, I, I would like to explore our things for making other archives. Actually, uh -huh. somebody had, I, this is one of those things that I should not do, but I'm very tempted to work on. Um, it would not be that hard to make something that takes, um, that uses the API and the webhooks of the system to take every post and mirror it to a read-only Usenet our news news server and uh -huh. people can connect to it with their news clients and read it that way if they if they want uh, that's actually a good uh, i know you're you're saying so that's actually a good oh, idea though i know it's a good idea i just shouldn't do it because i've got so much other things to do no, but, fair um, enough. If somebody else, if somebody wants to work on this um i've got i've got thoughts talk to me because <laughs> i think it would be really useful and i think actually other people running discourse would would be able to use it and one of the things people were complaining about um, which i think is also valid um this is actually jonathan corbett who does linux weekly news um was saying that you know now everything he's kind of having everything in one place and it right. feels like having everybody on their own uh discourse server somewhere kind of feels now like everything is separate mm -hmm. and um you know you can get notifications in your email but the email and it, I, we have people who basically use it only by email, but mm -hmm. I, explicitly in the design from you know the project, the emails really are to get you to the website. The website's right, right. where you should be there, and and you know, people maybe don't want to do that. So having if we could do this a Usenet bridge, we could actually set up a thing where we could have a bunch of different. Um, it could it could support a hierarchy as it does Usenet does of different you know different things. We could have you know org Fedora whatever. Um, and then have our stuff there, and you know, GNOME and whatever else could all be in a mirrorless stage server, so people could look at it all together. I don't know about posting from mm -hmm. there because of the authentication problems, right. but um, you know, uh, at least reading it and then having having links to go reply and interact would would be cool. So yeah, there's a project for somebody who wants to. Work on if anyone happens to be interested in setting that up, um, yeah, get in contact with Matthew, see what he see what he wants to do. Um, earlier you're mentioning like there's not really many ways to deal with spam with like a mailing list and like people trying to just basically just waste your time. Like I would imagine, I, I don't, I've not really seen it myself, but I would imagine a project at the scale of Fedora has some amount of people doing that. Like how many people really are there just? trying to just you know waste time on the mailing list just posting absolute nonsense like not just like taking things off topic but just genuinely bad faith actors 
only a handful really um mm-hmm. and you know it's there's there are there are more people who uh have trouble interacting in a healthy way who actually mean well and right, i think that's right. the hardest thing because you know there's this thing um that i i I, I subscribe to that, you know, one toxic person in your community is never worth it. No matter how much they've contributed, um, the damage they do is worse than anything they can add, which right. I, I definitely believe. Um, but I also believe in the fundamental good in people and that people can learn and change. Mm-hmm. And so I want to address all these things with that in mind and that, you know, um, people don't have to be a lot of people you know who care about fedora about the project about open source you know mm-hmm. may not know how to communicate their passions mm-hmm. um obviously i think um in tech in general and maybe open source especially we have a lot of people who are not neurotypical uh, i have adhd which i is a struggle for me um mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's fun when I can do a podcast and I'm going in every direction and, you know, ADHD is <laughs> that's great. That's totally fine uh, with me. Yeah, if you want yeah, to just right, go yeah. in any, uh, anywhere. Right. Uh, but it can also, you know, it's a, it's a challenge in getting things done and being productive sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and sometimes in communicating with people as well. And so we have a lot of people with many different kinds of ways their brains work, Not you know, mm-hmm. certainly not just ADHD. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times we have people from different parts of the world with different (laughs) worldviews, different ways of communicating, just different approaches. Um, Yeah, like we have one one thing, uh, my boss, when I started as the Fedora Project Leader, gave me a book about um, communicating in different cultures. Mm -hmm. I forget what the title is. Um, I think it's uh, Bow, Kiss, or Shake Hands. I think that's what it is. Sexy Kiss, bow, or shake hands. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's an interesting yeah, thing. It's got a few different hands. countries and a little bit just like a quick cultural summary. And one of the things I learned there, um, Red Hat has a big office in the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I found from this book and that validated with people that I know is that um, making a request where you make it a personal request, like, hey, could you please do this for me, mm-hmm. is very strong. Like that is taken as a like a, a personal obligation favor, and in, in America we say that very casually. Yeah. And so it's very easy to accidentally ask for a strong personal favor for someone when you just right. meant, uh, hey, here's an idea. Uh, so like being aware of those things is really important. And another one in in some cultures, um, it is m- saying no is seen as very rude. Right. So it is. Uh, it is, you know, the appropriate thing to do when you when you mean I will not do that is to say yes, I will do that, and then not do that, which is uh, much much more polite uh-huh. than uh, saying no. What, uh, right? And and again, to, mm-hmm. as, as an American, like that's shocking and yeah. can be very frustrating because mm-hmm. someone who's just trying to be polite to you and now they're just not holding up to their commitments and uh, right exactly so understanding yeah, yeah. all these things about how people interact in mailing lists and you know things that may seem to be you know, in bad you know see seem harmful mm-hmm. can sometimes just be misunderstandings which i hope we can right. work out um on the other hand we do have to look at the impact like if it is causing trouble we need to act um, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if it was meant well it matters what happened and right. so uh, that's a whole really I don't know. It's an ongoing challenge in any community. 